You and I have been on a tear as of late when it comes to the Mercedes-Benz world, but little hinfice there, it has been a very expensive tear. The EQS, EQS AMG, and the new SL. Now, it's time to look at something all new, but this is the one that pays the bills. So an important question, how much can one company change their most important volume product without disturbing the apple cart, at least aside from design? Apparently a lot, and that's not just the company making their own decision that's been pushed along by Brussels and Washington. So what does that mean? Electrification that sits aside a two liter four cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine. In this case, 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. But then there is a 48 volt mild hybrid system that resides here. It's not exactly the same system we saw in the S-Class. Remember in the S-Class, it's an integrated starter generator motor that sits between the engine and the transmission, and it formed the basis for most of the electrical system throughout the car. Now in the S-Class, this integrated starter generator motor 48 volt mild hybrid system adds 22 horsepower or 184 pound-feet of torque. In this, it's 20 horsepower and 148 pound-feet of torque. Now there's a couple of other differences there. It still has an integrated starter generator motor, but it doesn't sit between the engine and transmission. This one sits within the transmission housing itself. Now in addition to that, there is another large say, architectural change with this mild hybrid system. Yes, there's no accessory drive like in the S-Class. However, there's like an bitsy wee bit accessory drive because the S-Class systems that uses an electric air conditioner this uses a conventional compressor for the air conditioner so there is a very small belt down here that runs that compressor now a lot of this is a function of efficiency making this thing more efficient on a tank of fuel so what are those numbers well it's 23 33 27 but it's not just the fuel economy it can enable the car to switch on and off the engine at a light as as well as coast the vehicle. Then this one we're going to drive today is all-wheel drive. So they're on offer in rear drive as well as all-wheel drive. However, they've made a change to the all-wheel drive system where it can send more torque to the front wheels. This is a rear-wheel drive architecture, so it's very much a rear-wheel drive vehicle. However, what they've done is enable the system to send up to 5% more torque to the front wheels whenever the computer seems it needs more torque in the front wheels. Then there's the actual performance figures. This, it's not an AMG, but it's not exactly the slowest thing in the world. Zero to 65.9 seconds, VMAX, 130 miles an hour. So yes, technically not a parallel hybrid, but there still exists a wee bit of a weight penalty. 3,957 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 1,794 kilograms. Now something pertinent we need to discuss. This car, all wheel drive, if it weren't all-wheel drive, it would be 125 pounds less. With that, um, little delay. Oh no, no, there it comes. Okay, that is a combination of the turbocharger and the mild hybrid system working in conjunction with each other. I'd say it's about 2,500, almost 2,700 RPM where it really comes alive. I'd expect a little bit lower than that in terms of engine speed to get some power out of this. Now the passing power doesn't match the acceleration. Like acceleration, it's noticeable. You notice the mild hybrid system, it's quicker than what you'd expect from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. And there are many of them out there in equations like this. But passing power, it feels like a normal two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. I would have expected more there. Perhaps there's a way in which to get some assist when passing, I don't know what's going on there. Then shifting gears, literally, uh, nine speed automatic. And that shouldn't come as any surprise to you because this is the same transmission we've driven in many other Mercedes, not AMG, because this is the one with the torque converter. Works incredibly well here with a four cylinder. And this is where I'd be more worried about it because this engine has to work harder to get torque. So you would think the transmission, it has to hunt for gears, which happens a lot with these types of vehicles with smaller engines and sort of a luxury vehicle. This, that's not the case at all. It actually works as well as say it would be in the six cylinder application. 
Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options Game, with today's contestant, arguably one of the most important Mercedes products on the planet, which to really demonstrate that, in the last generation of Mercedes C-Class, which lasted for eight years, they sold 2.5 million of them. So let's dive into the new generation of C300 for a base price of $45,550. Now, for the avoidance of doubt, that is not the cheapest price on offer here. This is the one that has all-wheel drive. It would be $2,000 cheaper if it were rear-wheel drive. Uh, to that, we add the paint. We've seen this color before. It is called selenite gray. Now, this is not the Magno, which is the matte finish. This is the gloss finish. So it's not like three grand. This is a bargain at $750. Then on the inside, it is black Napa leather. You're not paying for the black color, you're paying for real leather, and wow, $2,590. Then one of my most favorite options on new Mercedes-Benz S-Class, and now this, the black wood with the aluminum lines in it. This is stunning, well worth $200. 19-inch AMG wheels, that is an additional $600. Then we move on to the illuminated door sills. I am a sucker for these things, especially Especially when they are bargained at $150. Then falling under the heading of was this car designed for Russia? A dash cam. You can get that fitted from the factory as standard for $200. I just want to point out, I saw a video on YouTube recently where dealers in South Africa, I'm not making this up, are installing blow torches underneath the driver and passenger door to prevent carjacking. I think we should worry if we start seeing that offered from the factory. And anyway, we press on here to the vented seats, $450. Then the panoramic sunroof. Now, for the avoidance of doubt, a sunroof is fitted as standard. However, if you want the whole thing as glass, that is an additional $1,000. Then the heated steering wheel, that is $250. Serious satellite radio. Why is this optional in an almost $50,000 car? $350. And we press on to the acoustic glass, which is usually about an $1,100 option. Here, it's a bargain at $150. Then something incredibly cool, the headlights. You know how on the Porsche episodes, we get those Porsches flown over from Germany with those special headlights, which can carve out a human being walking on the side of your car so you don't blind them? This has those headlights. That is an option. However, they go a step further with what they call the digital headlight package. There's a very unique party trick going on here. This can project images based on what the car is doing. Let's say for the sake of discussion, the adaptive driver system is trying to keep you in the lane, but you try to push the car over out of the lane, the headlight system will project a do not cross, it doesn't say do not cross, it's like a hazard symbol that goes on to the next lane to get you to have some attention to not push the car over. Now, what I would say here is, how about we make this programmable, like put teddy bears or family seals or flags of different countries to kind of personalize the car, being that we're paying $1,100 for, get this, 1.3 million pixels per headlight. To give you an idea, the headlight before that that was legal in the US was like 80 pixels per headlight. And then the AMG line package, notice the change in the rear bumper, the side skirts, and the front of the vehicle. Makes it a look like an AMG, but do not confuse this with an AMG. And then they add the night package, that is the black trim throughout the vehicle. That is not cheap, $3,050. Then the driver's assistance package, that's kind of pedestrian compared to everything else we talked about. That's the Distronic Plus, the level two autonomy. No, it's not a self-driving car, as well as the blind spot monitoring system. Then there's something called a DA3 package. This is all about parking. It's the Parktronic, as well as the parking pilot assist. Basically, that enables the car to park itself when you are in it. It's not one of these things where you pull the key fob out, stand outside the car, press the button, the car parks. This is kind of like the uh, entry-level version of automated parking. That also includes a 360-degree monitor, $950. Then the only other thing we add is the destination handling von Bremen Deutschland for $1,050 for a total retail price of $63,440. For a seat class. Anyway, driving dynamics, and we have to start with what's underneath this car. No surprise there, multi-link in the front as well as multi-link in the back. However, there is a bit of a surprise 
all C300s, meaning non-AMGs that will be coming, no adjustable damper. So yeah, there are different drive modes here, and you and I have been doing this entire thing in sport mode, but whether you're in sport or eco, the damper setting is the same. It's good that there's a little bit of pitch, squat, dive, and roll. After all, this is trying to be a luxury car, so I see what they're going for. So it's more compliance than it is composure. That said, the steering actually is pretty good. Good feedback, it's direct. There is a slight difference between sport and regular comfort modes. Nothing to write home about. The brakes, on the other hand, that unusual. There's a little bit more braking power here than one would need in a vehicle of this power. Good modulation, good pedal feel, but ultimately it can bring down a 4,000 pound car even in panic stop situations better than most. I say that to drive home a very important point. This ain't a big car. It's, yeah, 4,000 pounds, but the combination of a mild hybrid system, the turbocharger, and a smaller size, that all layered on top of a decent set of driving dynamics, it actually is a somewhat fun car to drive. Okay, so what have we learned today? Yes, there's a lot of changes for the most important car for Mercedes-Benz, but I would argue you and I learned more about personality. In going to some electrification for the existing four-cylinder turbocharged engine and then not putting in things like adjustable dampers, basically making this more of a luxury car, it has a completely different personality than a basic 3 Series or a basic A4. And that is a good thing because a lot of cars nowadays, and there are very few cars, they don't have personalities, which brings us to the wish list. And here, I would argue that personality comes from the electrification that's done here in a very smart way. The only thing I want to see above from all the other design stuff we talked about inside the car, can we do more with the mild hybrid system? I'm not looking for craziness here. I'm looking for like they have an overboost function with the turbocharger here. Maybe there's more assist, not just on acceleration, but in passing or in more cases where we can use the electrification to make this not really feel like a four cylinder that's got some boost, but something that's closer to a natural six cylinder. And this is just one man's opinion, and also this is where I turn the episode around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, a very interesting tidbit about this vehicle. So uh, all these car companies, they have a product manager assigned to each car. Well, the guy who is the product manager for this car was the product manager for the Maybach GLS. So think of it as like a bargain basement Maybach. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.